read the story of the great flood for what it actually says because that would force us to face the harsher realities of what life on earth includes. We prefer to remember maybe our children's version, that little toy boat that we had as kids, you know, the one whose lid could come off and you could put all the little wooden animals inside and float it around happily ever after. I mean, that's a nice Noah's Ark. That's fun, that's comforting. And the final promise from God to Noah when he worships at the altar under the Lord's rainbow, here's the words. God says, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. And the Lord goes on to say, when I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is seen in the clouds, I will look upon it and I will remember my everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. Did you get that? This, God cares about every living creature of all flesh, not just human beings. The everlasting covenant, which includes while the earth remains, the seed time, the harvest, the cold and the heat, the summer, the winter, the day and the night, it shall not cease, applies to the entire realm of living things, not just to humans. The story of Noah's Ark, as it's told in our Bible, offers to the earth and to all of its creatures a new beginning, a new possibility with new people, redeemed people, renewed people, revived people, reconciled people, ready as one family of humanity to have a second chance. This time you can get it right on earth. God trusts us. Makes me think of the words of the prophet Isaiah which was spoken to the Jews while they were in exile, as they were hoping to prepare to return to the promised land out of their 70 years of exile in Babylon. Isaiah says, thus says the Lord, he who created you, he who formed you, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name and you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be consumed, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Coming out of their exile, their brokenness, their despair, to reestablish Jerusalem from the chaos and destruction of war, those exiled priests and prophets who wrote this Noah's Ark story for us, had read the handwriting on the wall. They knew that the children of Israel would have to do better in their second chance as a nation than they did on their first go wrong. They had learned a hard won lesson. And through the story of Noah's Ark, they were giving people the possibility to believe a new day is dawning, a new start is possible. Out of the chaos and the destruction and the death will rise a new creation, but it was up to them to get it right with God. Their plight brought to mind that story of Dan West, the conscientious objector during the Second World War who saw poverty in the people in Spain as the war ended, and he helped handing out food and supplies to families who'd lost everything, just one link along the supply chain. The children had no milk to drink because the war had killed their cows. Parents and grandparents had died in the fighting. Surely he could do something more to help the villages in poverty, something dramatic, something foundational. Back home in Ohio, Guernsey cows filled big red barns and Dan West had the idea. If you give one milk cow to a starving family, not to be slaughtered for meat, but to be kept alive in order to give them milk, it also then we kept alive to have calves, much like the animals on Noah's Ark who came in as couples and who went out as families. These calves could then be given to more families. Each heifer could save one family, but by passing the gift along, perhaps they could save the whole village. 
Dan, of course, first had to get those heifers donated. You heard that story. And then secondly, he'd have to arrange for a big boat to ship them overseas, like Noah's Ark. That first shipment of cows was 17 animals in all, and the first three were named, as you heard the kids read them, Faith, Hope, and Charity, the first three cows of the Heifer Project. That was back in 1944. Faith, the cow, was sent to Puerto Rico as American-affiliated island was badly flooded last year, and still the infrastructure of Puerto Rico is badly damaged. It has not come back, bounced back the way Houston and other places in America have done. Heifer International is one of the helping agencies helping rebuild Puerto Rico right now. And your help as you put coins in that little box will help them right now. Over the past 74 years, Heifer has sent more and more animals to feed people all over the world, not just cows. There, now, there's no elephants, <laughs> there's no giraffes like in our colorful ark banner, but there are chickens and ducks and rabbits were sent, goats and sheep were sent, draft horses, pigs, geese, even fish were being sent. Nowadays, honeybees are being boxed up and sent. Noah and his family made a big difference according to the story. A big difference not only for saving the animals, but a di big difference for the ultimate recovery of human civilization from the giants who had mismanaged it previously in Adam and Eve's era. In the Bible story of the ark. Well, now we are going to do our part to fill a modern day ark with animals. Also in the hope of making the world a better place, maybe a bit more civilized, certainly more interconnected, and we do so in God's name, for Jesus' sake. Amen.